In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, Reign on earth. Fiat. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My daughter Louisa, let us pray together. There are certain sad times where my justice, unable to contain itself because of the evils of creatures, would want to flood the earth with new scourges. So, prayer in my divine will is necessary. Now, do you hear this? Prayer in the divine will is necessary to stop what is coming. That is extending over all places its defense of the creatures. And with its power, prevent my divine justice from approaching the creature to strike her. So, if you care about your family, pray, Jesus says, in my divine will. This is necessary. So, this is what we pray. My Father, I, your Son, offer you this blood of mine. Oh, please let it be cover, let it cover all the intelligences of creatures, rending vain all their evil thoughts, dimin dimming the fire of their dimming the fire of their passions and making holy, holy intelligences arise again. May this blood cover their eyes and be a veil to their sight so that the taste of evil pleasures may not enter on them through their eyes, and may they not get dirty with the mud of the earth. May this blood of Jesus, of mine, cover and fill their mouths and render their lips dead to blasphemies, to imp uh, imprecations, and to all bad words. My Father, may this blood of mine cover their hands and strike terror in man for the so many evil actions. May this blood circulate in our holy eternal will, in order to cover all, to defend all, and to be a deafening weapon for the creature before the rights of our justice. So here's a prayer that Jesus has prayed. We can pray with him, with Our Lady, and with Louisa, and braid ourselves uh, with Jesus, Mary, and Louisa as we pray this prayer. Again, mankind is so far from what God has planned, and when you look at this last hundred years, we have really fallen apart with two world wars, with um, lifestyles that are not of God, um, with sin that is so horrendous uh, that even the, der the demons turn their faces in repulsion of what is happening. Volume 17, August 9, 1924, my daughter Louisa, extend your arms together with me in my divine will to repair for many who lay their works in the human will that forms for them the net of all evils that makes them fall into the eternal abyss and to prevent my divine justice from pouring out upon them in order to vent its just fury. In fact, when the creatures lay herself in my divine will in order to work and to suffer, my justice feels touched by the creature with the power of my divine will and ceases its just rigors. And so a divine veil, vein comes out 
that the creature makes flow between God and the human family, and because of it, my justice cannot help but have in regard for poor humanity. So you can see that uh, this great gift of the divine will holds the hand of God uh, uh, so it doesn't come down and completely destroy everything. That's what Jesus said. If you weren't here, Louisa, he says, I would have destroyed the earth a long time ago. And he says to Louisa, Louisa, through you, the destiny of the world is in your hands. And while he was saying this, he showed how the creatures are preparing a great revolution among parties, against governments, and against the church. What a horrible massacre could be seen. How many tragedies. Then my sweet Jesus continued, My daughter, Louisa, have you seen? Creatures do not want to stop it. Their greed for shedding blood is not yet quenched in them. And this cause shall cause my justice by earthquakes, by water, by fire, to destroy entire cities and to make their inhabitants disappear from the face of the earth. So you can see, again, creatures cannot stop shedding blood. You, you wonder why all these beheadings, their greed for shedding blood is not yet quenched in them. And this is, I, I saw a program the other night about crucifixions. And the saints say there will be more crucifixions at the end of time than at the beginning. And uh, this one if you have ever seen uh, Barabbas, the movie Barabbas, uh, the last scene of Barabbas, he's crucified, and then then it just pans, and as far as you can see, are people being crucified. Uh, this was the way to uh, exterminate, and like Jesus says, um, their, their sin is for shedding blood. I mean, look at the babies. 4,000 babies a, a day are killed in the United States. It says very clearly, because of this, God's justice brings earthquakes, fire, water, plagues, famines to destroy entire cities, to make their inhabitants disappear from the face of the earth. Therefore, my daughter Louisa, pray, suffer, work in my divine will, because this alone can be an embankment so that my divine justice does not burst out with its devastating thunderbolts in order to destroy the earth. Now, even when we're talking, this thunderbolts is the book of Revelation. Uh, that's why you have to get your, to know your angels to uh, with hail, with, with fire, with brimstone, with thunderbolts. You have to know your angels and say, you know, protect us, uh, keep us safe. Um, you know, when floods come, you know, you have to know the angels that... That your 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 areas won't be flooded. Uh, you, everything that has happened to man is going to now happen. It's Jesus says it's going to make the inhabitants almost disappear from the face of the earth. You you have to understand. This was what Jesus said to Saint Faustina. He says first there'll be a time of mercy, and then there will be a time of justice. 517, September 11th. Pretty good, huh? 1924. My daughter Louisa, do not cry. Don't you want to trust your Jesus? Now, that's what he says to us, too. Trust in Jesus is so important. Let me do. Let me do. Do not take things lightly. Rather, oh, how many sad things are about to happen. My divine justice can no longer have, hold back its thunderbolts to strike the creatures. They are about to break out one against the other. And when you hear the evils of your brothers, you shall for real feel remorse for your oppositions to your usual sacrifices. If you, too, had contributed to push my... As if you, too, had to push my justice to strike the creatures. So here, you, um, uh, again, this is 1924. It wasn't the state law for contraception. It wasn't the state law for abortion. It wasn't the state law for uh, euthanasia. It wasn't the state law for uh, uh, sodomy marriages. It wasn't the, it wasn't the state law uh, to not be able to talk about Jesus Christ. We are in a far worse condition now than ever. And, and this is why Jesus says, pray. Don't take it lightly. Trust Jesus. Believe in Jesus. Hope in Jesus. Have confidence in Jesus. So he says in volume 17, October 23rd, 1924, you must know, so this is a command from Jesus, that the soul who lets my divine will live within her 
as the soul prays, as she suffers, as she works, as she loves, etc., forms a sweet enchantment to the divine pupils of Jesus in such a way as to enclose within her acts the gaze of God that in that enchantment, and it is, and so the omnipotent one, taken by the sweetness of this enchantment, feels disarmed of many chastisements which the creatures draw upon themselves with their grave sins. So here, Jesus says, when you live in the divine will, everything changes. When you let Jesus reign in you with your prevenient act in the morning and your actual acts throughout the day, God is, is, is like almost mesmerized by the souls living in the divine will. So what, what's happening is Jesus is offering us, to us, the, the means to um, uh, disarm the many chastisements that these grave sins of mankind are bringing upon earth. This enchantment has the virtue of preventing my divine justice from pouring out with all its fury upon the face of the earth because my divine justice, too, remains enchanted by my most holy divine will operating in Louisa and the souls linked to Louisa. He says it very clearly. My divine will living in Louisa and the souls linked to Louisa who is crossing the exile as though operative and ruling in the house of the creature, that is more amazing. He says, and this is why Louisa forms for me a more pleasing enchantment that charms me, that holds me, and holds such an attraction for my gaze as to captivate God to fix my pupil upon Louisa and the souls linked to Louisa without being able to move them. Ah, you do not know how necessary this enchantment is in these basically horrible times in which so many evils shall come. The peoples shall be forced to eat one another. They shall be taken by such rage as to become fierce one against the other. But the greatest guilt is of the leaders. Poor peoples, they have true slaughterers, incarnate devils as leaders who want to slaughter their brothers. If the evils were not grave, your Jesus would not leave you as though deprived of him. You fear that it may be for other things that I deprive you of me. No, no, be reassured. It is my divine justice that depriving you of me wants to pour out upon creatures. You, however, never go out of my divine will so that its sweet enchantment may spare the people's worst evils. So this has already happened. I think they said... Uh, I was in the news last night. Somebody was uh, killed somebody and was just devouring them. So you have to understand, this is beyond savage. Uh, this, this is animal. And see, the demonic, when, when, you, when you begin to sin and lose, see, either you are demonized or demonized. Either you are one with God, growing closer to God, or you're going to see what Jesus talks about here cannibalization I, again the first thing that happens in war is starvation that's the very first thing that happens now during World War II when you look at some of the bombing uh, uh, of, the, of, our, of the allied forces over Germany the people were still farming the land the people were still farming uh, we don't farm anymore I mean if you have a garden, how much can you live off the, the garden? It's when this happens, there's not going to be any food, and uh, uh, you have to remember. I think it was yeah, it was was it was a uh, what do you call those cabs where the people drive Uber? That uh, he the the guy that was talking to the people said that. He he killed he killed people and ate them and he said to this girl in the car, "Have you ever tasted human flesh?" And she got out of the car. That was just the other day. That was just on the news. Now, uh, just to show you how crazy it is, when um, when the people in the desert said to Muhammad. We're thirsty. What does Allah want us to do? How can we help our thirst? Muhammad said, you drink uh, uh, camel urine. Okay? Guess what's on sale in the United States now? 
the you you have to understand things are going to change. Things are going to change very clearly. That's it. You don't want to hear anything of that. <laughs> That's funny. No. It, what's coming, it, you have to understand. It's never been seen and will never be seen again. We... The, 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 the 17 year olds in, in, in World War II went to die. The 17 year olds in World War I went to die. They were farmers, basically. They knew, how, they knew discipline. 17 year olds today know how to play games. They're, they're, in, in, in 1917, they retooled the, the iron industry. In 1942, they retooled the iron industry. We have no iron industry. There's nothing to retool. You have to understand <laughs> what Jesus is saying here is, is for us to know. Our Lord is asking us to pray, as he says, to spare the people's worst evils. Pray in the divine will. God bless you there, Joe. Volume 17, December 1st, 1924. I've had unbuilded, embittered to the highest degree. As, and I, as I was praying, I cried over my heart destiny of being deprived of Jesus. He, the one who formed my whole life. My state is ir, irreparable. No one is moved to pity for me. Everything is justice. And then who would be moved to compassion for me if Jesus, he, the one who is the source of compassion, denies it to me? Now, as I was crying and crying, I felt... Hands being, my hands being grabbed by the hand of Jesus and raising me up high, he said, Come, you all, to see a scene so great, never and never seen before, either in heaven and on earth, a soul that is dying continuously out of pure love for me. See, that's Louisa. Louisa G loved Jesus so much that she said, I am dying without you. Now, Jesus says this. This has never been seen before. Our Lady went through it, being the mother of God, Theotokos. But he says, I want you to see a scene so great, never before seen by any human, either in heaven or on earth. It is a soul dying of continuously out of pure love for me. At these words of Jesus, the heaven opened and the whole celestial hierarchy looked at me. And I, too, looked at myself and I saw my poor soul withered and dying like a flower that is about to bend over its own stem. But while I was dying, a secret virtue gave me life. Alas, maybe this is the punishing justice of God that is justly punishing me. My God, my Jesus, have pity on me. Poor, a pity on a poor dying. I have the hardest destiny among all poor, poor mortals to die without being able to die. And, and that's what Louisa did. Jesus said, I crucify you, Louisa, every day. We're going to see one who suffered more than any human next to the Blessed Mother. And when we look at Our Lady, we see the one who suffered more than any human next to Jesus Christ. So here's the three that suffered the most, Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. We have to understand this is not just a good soul. She is extraordinary. Volume 17, February 22nd, 1925. All channels were opened between God and Adam, and by virtue of our divine will, our goods were Adam's. And this, with justice, because Adam was our son. Adam was our image. Uh, Adam was a work that came out of our hands and from the ardent breath of our womb. So here, again, we see... He says to Louisa, you are going to take the place of fallen Adam. You're going to be the mother of the second generation of the children of light. The first generation of the children of light did not happen. Adam's first child was Cain, who killed his brother. The first sin on earth was murder, which continues today. Murder, murder of a brother. And now Jesus is saying, Louisa, I'm making you greater than a second Adam. Because he says, Adam will lose this gift. He says to Louisa, Louisa, you will never lose this gift. 
Volume 17, February 22nd, 1925. All channels were opened between God and Adam. I read that. Volume 17, May 1st, 1925. When the divinity found in this Blessed Virgin Mary compensation for the love of everyone, the divinity felt enraptured and formed in the Blessed Mother its conception, that is, the incarnation of the word Jesus. And as the Blessed Virgin Mary conceived me, Jesus, she took on the office of co-redemptrix and shared and embraced together with me all the pains, all the substitutions, all the reparations, the paternal love for everyone. In the Immaculate Heart of my mother, there was a fiber of maternal love for each soul. This is why, in truth, with justice, when I was on the cross, I, Jesus, declared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of all. Volume 17, July 9, 1925. My daughter Louisa, don't you want to cons- convince yourself, excuse me, convince yourself that when my justice, out of a just reason, wants to chastise the peoples, I am forced to hide from you? You are nothing other than a particle, that a, that a bird, uh, that a little particle that binds all the other particles of the creatures and keeps them in a familiar relationship with you. And as though in feast, so wanting to strike the other particles that are bound to you, my divine justice finds itself in a contrast. It feels restrained from striking. That is why during this last days in which I was, I sent chastisements to the world, I remained hidden from you, though still remaining within you. So here Jesus is saying, we are linked to Louisa. He cannot chastise Louisa. This is another reason why the chastisement will have little or no effect upon the children of the divine will. It's, it's very, very clear. Now, as Jesus was saying this, I find myself outside of myself, and he showed me that in various points of the earth there had been somewhere earthquakes, somewhere grave fires with deaths of peoples, and somewhere else other troubles, and it seemed that the more grave evils would follow, and I was frightened, and I prayed. See, as she was, she was shown what is coming, and it's very, very clear. Um, he needs us to cooperate with him. Volume 18, September 16, 1925. Do you think it is nothing that I do not come out of you, and that I'm sparing the, and share in sharing my, my of my pains with you? Ah, my daughter Louisa, isn't it? Isn't nothing? On the contrary, it is something great. Okay, so here, the sharing of pains with of Jesus is great. Now, think about our own lives. Each of us is suffering, physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. And Jesus is saying, I want to share my pains with you. And when we say, in this suffering that I'm going through, I suffer with you, Jesus, suffering. You, Jesus, suffer with me, suffering. He says, this is great. As I do not come to you, my justice becomes filled with scourges in order to strike man, so much so that all the past evils, the earthquakes, the wars, shall be as nothing compared to the evils that shall come, to the great war and a great revolution that are, they are preparing. Sins are so many that men do not deserve that I share my pains with you, Louisa, in order to free them from the deserved scourges. Therefore, have patience. My divine will shall make up for my visible presence, though I remain hidden in you. And if it were not so, you would not have kept the, the pace in making your usual rounds in my divine will. It's the same thing for us. As you pray your rounds in the divine will, everything is changing with your family, with your friends. Miracles are happening in your family. It is I who, though hidden, do them within you, and you follow me, he, the one, whom you do not see. However, my, once my divine justice has completed the filling of the scourges, I shall be with you like before. Therefore, courage, wait for me, and do not fear. You see, it's, it's, there's going to be the new heavens and the new earth. Don't worry. Now, when Jesus was saying this, I found myself, I saw myself in the midst of the world and Almost all nations, one could see preparations for war, new, more tragic ways of fighting that struck fright at the mere sight. And then the great human blindness that, becoming yet more blind, acted like a beast, not like a man, because it was blind. And I, I, it could not see that, but, why, but while wounding others, it wounded itself. 
So here, Jesus is showing us that uh, uh, what's coming is 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 going to be um, is going to be horrific. It's going to be horrible. Yet, the, when we're linked to Louisa, the scourges will not harm us. Remember, Jesus says it will happen like in the time of Noah. Noah did not get wet. It's the same thing for us. What's coming is going to be horrific. Yet, when we're with Jesus and Mary and Louisa, there is nothing to fear. There is nothing to worry about. Uh Volume 18, November 1st, 1925. To you, Louisa. You, Louisa. I can't see this. <laughs> Sorry. You, Louisa, do not know what it means to suffer in my divine will. Wherever my divine will was, there ran, there ran your pain on earth and heaven with the saints and angels, and it reached them and all placed themselves in the act of looking at you and of helping you. So all were turned toward you. And if paradise were capable of suffering, it would have changed all of their joys and happinesses into sorrows. But since it is not capable of suffering, all beseech graces in exchange for a pain so great. So the pains of the soul, Louisa, who lives in my divine will, are the cross of all. They satisfy for everyone and convert the fury of divine justice into celestial dew. So we see here how, because of Louisa, and her suffering, um, the chastisements did not have their full effect. I mean, it wasn't. It, it was. It was softened. Volume 18, December 25th, 1925. Would you not condemn a man who, taken by a child's affection for a child, only have him to him around a little bit to amuse himself with him? He would give him a banknote worth thousands. The little boy, not knowing the value of it, tears it into a thousand pieces after a few minutes. But if, on the other hand, first he makes the child desire it, and then he makes him know its value, and then the good which that bank note of a thousand can do for him, and then he gives it to him, the child will not tear it to pieces, but will go and put it under lock and key, appreciating the gift and loving the giver more. And you would praise the man who had the ability to make known to the little child the value of money. If a man does so, much more do I, who will give my gifts with wisdom, with justice, and with true love. So Jesus is doing this with the book of heaven. He's trying to he's teaching us. 519 March 14th 1926 now the one who has the the one who has won the divine will has won the whole of creation and even God himself therefore by right of justice Louisa must possess all that my divine will possesses. So Louisa has won the divine will. Louisa has won all of creation. She basically takes the place of Adam fallen. And Jesus says, when Adam fell, I can't give it to him because he'll lose it again. But I give it to you, Louisa, because you and your children will never lose this gift. Do you see why he, he calls us his most uh, beloved children? We, we will not, once we, once we obtain it, we can't lose it. Volume 19, April 25th, 1926. Then afterward, my sweet Jesus made himself seen crucified, and he was suffering very much, and I did not know what to do to relieve Jesus, and I felt annihilated by the privation suffered. And Jesus, unnailing himself on the cross, threw himself into my arms, telling me, help me to placate, placate my divine justice, for it wants to strike the creatures. A strong earthquake would be felt, such as to cause the destruction of towns, and I was left frightened, and Jesus disappeared, and I found myself inside myself. Volume 19, April 28, 1926. I, Jesus, always ask Mary, my celestial mother, whether she wanted to accept it in order to hear that fiat being repeated to me in each pain, in each circumstance, and even in each heartbeat of Mary's. That fiat resounded so sweet, gentle, and harmonious to me that I wanted to hear it being repeated in every instant of the Blessed Mother's life. This is why I would always ask her, Mama, do you want to do this? Do you want to suffer this pain? And my fiat would bring Mary the seas of the goods it contained and would make Mary understand the intensity of the pain that she was accepting. This understanding, though divine through divine light, 
and that which step by step Mary was to suffer gave the Blessed Mother such martyrdom as to infinitely surpass surpass the struggles that creatures str- suffer. In fact, since the seed of sin was missing in the Blessed Mother, the seed of the struggling struggle was missing. And so my divine will had to find another device that Mary might not be inferior to the other creatures, and that is in suffering. Because having to acquire by justice the right of queen of sorrows, Mary was to surpass in suffering all the, cre- all the creatures together. Now you must know, that the one who has done good to all, who has loved all, and has operated in a universal way for God, for all, has rights over everything, over everyone. And with justice, operating in a universal way is the divine way. See, this is the Catholic way. The universal way is the Catholic way. The universal way is the Catholic faith. And my celestial mother was was able to operate in the ways of her God because Our Lady possessed the kingdom of our divine will. He says, you have to understand this. Now, having operated in our supreme will, Mary has the rights of the possession that she formed in our kingdom. Who else can requite the Blessed Mother if not the one, Louisa, who lives in the same kingdom? So here Jesus is saying that with Mary uh, and Jesus, the one who lives in the divine will, the only one that lives in the divine will is Louisa, so therefore she can requite the Blessed Mother as well. 19, June, volume 19, June 29th, 1926, our divine will glorifies the image of our immutable immutability in the firmness of the mountains, the image of our divine justice in the roaring of the thunder and in the bolt of lightning. So here, we see this greatness of God. This is this is uh, this is the divine justice that's coming. It's it's not a simple earthquake. It's not a simple thunderstorm. It's not a symbol uh, a simple anything. It's divine immutability that's coming. Volume 19, June 2nd, 1926. I was in my usual state and my sweet Jesus showed divine justice in the act of unloading itself over over the earth, commanding the elements to rage against creatures. And I trembled in seeing that somewhere there were waters inundating towns almost to bury them. Somewhere the wind transported and eradicated plants, trees, and houses with a mighty power to the point of making a heap of them, leaving various regions in the most squalid misery. Somewhere... Else, there were earthquakes crawling with considerable damage. But who can say all the evils that are about to swoop down upon earth? In addition to this, my always loved Jesus made himself seen in my interior of suffering in a harrowing way because of the many offenses that creatures were giving him, especially because of the many hypocrisies. It seemed that under the apparent good, they had poison, swords, spears, and nails hidden to wound Jesus in every way. Then, as if Jesus wanted me together with him to suffer, he told me, My daughter Louisa, the scales of my justice are, the scale of my justice is full and is overflowing upon the cre- upon creatures. As daughter of my divine will, do you want me to place you in the reflection of my justice, that you may share in its blows? Indeed, it is about to make a heap of the earth while satisfying justice. With your sufferings you shall spare your brothers, the one who lives in in the high heaven, in the high kingdom of the supreme will must defend and must help those who are down below. So here we, we can call upon Louisa in our prayers. She has to defend us. She has to help us. Why? Because she's one with Jesus and Mary. This is her job. Now while Jesus was saying this, I felt divine justice was being was pouring its reflection over me. And as Jesus identified me with himself, I suffered his blows, I suffered his wounds, I suffered his pains together with him. There were so many that I myself did not know whether I would be left alive or dead. But to my highest sorrow, withdrawing my Jesus, mitigated my pains, and I remained once again, crossing my hard and long exile, but always fiat, fiat, fiat. So she wanted to go to heaven. And she was sad when she didn't get there. By 19 July 8, 1926, I was 
fusing all of myself in the holy divine will, and my sweet Jesus made himself seen in my interior with his arms raised in the act of preventing divine justice from pouring over the creatures, putting me also in the same position. <coughs> Excuse me. To have me do what he himself was doing. But the creatures seemed to incite divine justice to strike them. And Jesus, as though tired, lowering his arms, told me, my daughter Louisa, what human perfidy. But it is right, it is necessary, that after so much tolerance, I free myself of so many old things that occupy creation, that being infected, bringing the infection to the new young things, to the, to the new little plants. And I am tired of the fact that creation, my dwelling given to man, but still mine because of perverse and vivif and persevered and vivified by me continuously is occupied by servants, ungrateful ones, by enemies, and even those who don't recognize me, even recognize me. So here Jesus said, in another place, I'm going to kill the plants that are poisoning my little plants. I'm going to destroy the plants that are killing my little innocent plants. You have to understand, what's coming is the kingdom. So he says this, Therefore, I want more, I want to move on by destroying entire regions and what serves as their nourishment. The ministers of justice shall be the elements that investing them shall make them feel the divine power over them. I want to purify the earth in order to prepare the dwelling place for my children. You, Louisa, shall be always with me. My divine will shall always be your starting point. And even in your little sacks, because even in the littlest things, my divine will wants to have its divine life, its beginning and its end. Nor does it tolerate that the human will may make its little appearances into its kingdom. So here Jesus saying, I'm, I'm, bringing, I'm going to bring about a new heaven and a new earth. I'm, I'm going to get rid of the old. What's coming is, is a new way of living. And that's everyone will be living in the divine will. Volume 19, Ju July 11th, 1926. It is necessary to make known how much this kingdom and divine will cost me, Jesus, that I had to sacrifice you, Louisa, the littlest of all creatures, so that mankind might enter once again into the kingdom that he had lost. And therefore, I keep you nailed to a bed for 40 years and more without error, without the fullness of light of the sun that everyone enjoys and how little, how her little heart has been a refuge of my pains and of those of creatures, how Louisa has loved everyone. Louisa has prayed for everyone. Louisa has defended everyone. And how many times Louisa has exposed herself to the blows of divine justice to defend every one of her brothers and then her intimate pains and the very privations of me that, that martyred Louisa's little heart, giving Louisa continuous death. See, Jesus says the way it cost Jesus to basically crucify this little daughter. She took she took her with her fiat uh, to stand in our place. You, you have to understand this is not a saintly thing or a good thing or a holy thing. In fact, since Louisa has known no other life but mine, no other will but mine, all of these pains laid the foundation of the kingdom of my divine will and like solar rays matured the fruits of the supreme will so it is necessary to make known how much this kingdom cost you, Louisa, and me, Jesus, so that from its cost they may know how much I, God, yearn for the children of the divine will to acquire it, to form its cost, uh, and excuse me, and from its cost, they may appreciate the divine will, love the divine will, and aspire to enter into the divine will in order to live in the kingdom of my supreme will. He says, you're going to learn this when you learn about Louisa. This is what the 36 volumes are for. And when somebody says, well, I'm living in the divine will, I don't need Louisa, that's mere foolishness. Jesus says, you're going to learn this, you're going to love it, you're going to want it because of Louisa. When we realize that she has done this for us. Volume 19, August 22nd, 1926. It is justice that since 
Louisa suffers mortal pains. Louisa be substituted with a new divine life. This is justice. This is why it's going to be good for some, but bad for most. Most will not receive this new divine life. They can't by the way they have lived. So Jesus is asking us to repair and redo in the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, so that everyone has the opportunity to receive this new divine life. If it were not so, I, God, would let myself be surpassed by the love of the creature, which cannot be. Volume 19, September 5th, 1926. But do you know what it means to possess such a vast paternity and such a long daughtership? It means to be bound with bonds of justice to all the riches, to all the glory, to all the honor, and all the privileges that such a vast paternity possesses. This is to receive the divine inheritance of the Father. This is what Jesus is getting her ready for. After this, blessed Jesus brought me outside of myself and showed me how deformed his image had become in creatures. It was horrifying to see it so unrecognizable and ugly. The sanctity of the gaze of Jesus was reluctant to look at them, but the compassion of his most holy heart pushed him to have pity on the works of his hands deformed by being so ugly because of their fault. But while Jesus was grieved to the summit of seeing his image so transformed, we arrived at some places where the offenses that they were giving him were so many that unable to take it any more, he changed his appearance of goodness, assuming the aspect of justice. Jesus threatened chastisements and earthquakes, water and fire were put against the peoples to destroy men and cities. And I prayed to Jesus to spare the peoples. And Jesus, taking me back to my bed, shared his pains with me. Fiat. You have to understand, Louisa tried her, her best. The next part, part four, is even more intense. It's even more intense. You, you have to understand Jesus is trying to wake us up. You have to understand, this is, not, this is not the same old, same old anymore. It's a new beginning for mankind. So what we'll do is we'll read the, we'll pray, I should say, the act of consecration of the Holy Divine Will. If we can kneel. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O adorable and divine will. Here I am before the immensity of your light, that your eternal goodness may open to me the doors and make me enter into it to form my life all in you, divine will. Therefore, prostrate before your light, I, the littlest among all creatures, come, O adorable will, into the little group of the first children of your supreme fiat. Prostrate in my nothingness, I beseech and implore your endless light that it may want to invest me and eclipse everything that does not belong to you in such a way that I may do nothing other than look, comprehend, and live in you, divine will. It will be my life, the center of my intelligence, the enrapture of my heart and of my whole being. In this heart, the human will will no longer have life. I will banish it forever and will form the new Eden of peace, of happiness, and of love. With it, I shall always be happy. I shall have a unique strength and a sanctity that sanctifies everything and brings everything to God. Here, prostrate, I invoke the help of the sacrosanct trinity that they admit me to live in the cloister of the divine will so as to restore in me the original order of creation just as the creature was created. Celestial Mother, sovereign queen of the divine fiat, take me by the hand and enclose me in the light of the divine will. You will be my guide, my tender mother. You will guard your child, will teach me to live and to maintain myself in the order and the bounds of the divine will. Celestial sovereign, to your heart I entrust my whole being. I will be the tiny little child of the divine will. You will teach me the divine will, and I will be attentive in listening to you. You will lay your blue mantle over me, so that the infernal serpent may not dare to penetrate into the sacred Eden, to entice me and make me fall into the maze of the human will. Heart of my highest good Jesus, you will give me your flames that they may burn me, consume me, and nourish me, to form in me the life of the supreme will. St. Joseph, you will be my protector, the custodian of my heart, and will keep the keys of my will in your hands. 
You will keep my heart jealously and will never give it to me again, that I may be sure never to go out of the will of God. Guardian angel, guard me, defend me, help me in everything, so that my Eden may grow flourishing and be the call of the whole world into the will of God. Celestial court, come to my help, and I promise you to live always in the divine will. Amen. And may the blood that flowed upon the wood of this cross free us from our human will, that we live in God's holy divine will always. We ask this in Jesus' name, under the mantle of Mary, through the intercession of Louisa, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And if you'd like to be anointed, uh, come right up. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.